What's up, guys? I'm back. But uh, this is part two of that. I do apologize for that, guys. This is part two of why I still can't be taught. But, like, if you guys heard me play that song, you guys, you know, know now that, you know, I play by vocal cord. I don't play by your normal average chord. And believe it or not, I do get a lot of criticism because of that. Because I rather I play by vocal cord instead of by your normal note. Shout out to my brother Eric. What's up, man? And but like if you guys did hear that song in the last video that I did on guitar sound and silence by the stern, which is actually one of my personal favorites by them. Um, you guys, you know, you guys kind of see where I'm coming from. Like, I don't know how I make the artwork pieces that I do. I really don't. I don't know how I'm able to, you know, do songs on guitar like I do. How the sounds I come out with music-wise that don't exist, I don't know how I make them. I just do. Because, see, when you guys go to sleep at night, you guys see things. But I see and hear sounds and stuff that just don't exist in this human world. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Like, and that's where a lot of my sounds come from, are non-existent sounds that I try to create and put out. And that's why I have my signature sounds. Like, you know, I have my signature sounds that nobody can ever match or touch. I mean, I've had people try to recreate it and do it, and it's not the same. But uh, that is ultimately why my music cannot be taught. That's why my artwork cannot be taught because I do things a lot different than the norm. And I think I speak for all artists when I say this, no matter what it is. All right. No matter what it is, like whether it's a poem, whether it's you know, lyrics, whether it's a painting or a stock photo or whatever. See, when you guys see artwork, like when you guys see, you know, random ass poems on the internet, you guys see random ass poems. Myself, I see potentially good songs. And then what do I do? I take out those poems and I transform them into songs in my own way. Just like with my best friend Ashley, who unfortunately passed away several years ago, um, on behalf of her and her family, I'm taking some of the poems that she wrote and transforming them into songs for her. Because I know that's something that she would have wanted me to do. And a lot of people don't get that. When you guys see normal stuff, you see normal stuff. Like when you guys see a stock photo, you guys see a stock photo on Google. When you guys see a random ass poem on Google or whatever, 
you know, I see a potentially good pitcher that can be made into something. And I see a potentially good song that can actually be a huge hit. Art is art, no matter how you do it. And a lot of people get pissed about that. Yes, I do write a lot of my own stuff. Yes, I do paint a lot of my own stuff from scratch. But also look for inspiration. We pull from those poems. And a lot of the times, the people that write those poems, they don't care if you use them. They really don't care. I've spoken with several people that have allowed me to, you know, take their poems and transform them into songs, and they've turned out to be really good songs. So, you know, like, ultimately, guys, my art my music can't be taught. Like, like I'm not trying to be discouraging, but it, it's true. We live on a different, almost on a different time scale than your average person. Because see, us true artists, we never sleep. I mean, we might sleep like one, two, maybe three hours. And when we're feeling super exhausted, then we'll sleep. But other than that, we're constantly, you know, going. It's, an around, it's a round-the-clock thing. And if I had to guess at how many hours I've slept this year, I'd say a little less than 100. And your average person sleeps over 1,000 hours a year. I slept like under 100. And why? Because my mind's constantly going with ideas. And when I have that idea, I feel like I have to get it out. I have to make this sound. I have to create this sound that nobody's heard. I have to create that. And that's why over these last 28 months, these last 28, 29 months, I've been working with a brand new genre called Phantom Step, which I created just by random sounds that don't even exist and taking sounds that should not work together at all, like completely different genres, and making them work. And if you guys listen to any of my music, you guys will know exactly where I'm coming from. And a lot of people don't think that it's possible to combine, you know, like rock and hip hop and jazz and EDM and like just different sounds that should not go together. But I'm one of those few that can do it. And I know it sounds weird, but it's completely true. Ask anybody that has heard my work. I mean, granted, yeah, I get haters saying that it's average dubstep, that it's shitty and blah, blah, blah. But no, it's more than that. You have to listen to each individual sound to really get the concept. You can't just hear music. like You have to feel it. You have to feel where it's coming from. That's why when I created this whole new genre, like people really took to it. They're like, dude, this is really good. Like, what is this? Right, exactly. Dude. And that's kind of how I started out too. Like, if you guys don't know, I did do a lot of remixes. Um, my most famous one right now is actually um, Linkin Park's The Catalyst remix. Like, that's one that I actually did about 10 years ago. I released that about 10 years ago and made it about 10 years ago, completely forgot about it. And then just released it like a few days ago, which. Turned out really good. Like, I was very impressed with that. Like, it was cool to release something from over 10 years ago. 
Like, it was super fun to do that. Like, I enjoyed that a lot. But, like, and a lot of people, you know, doubt or question my status among the music and art community. And it, it's sad. It really is. Like, how many times do I have to prove to you that I, I am legit? Like, I have a bunch of very big names, some I've known since a kid, some that, you know, I just recently, within the last five, six years, got on supporting my stuff. Like, this right here, this is a constant reminder for me. Um, you guys don't know, I'm a very big Power Rangers fan. You know, grew up on the entire series and still watch, even to this day. And yes, I do watch Super Ninja Steel, but um, a lot of people don't think that somebody like this could actually enjoy my art, which is Jason David Frank from Power Rangers. He actually likes, because outside of Power Rangers, he plays this character Bloodshot for the company Valiant. And I did a Bloodshot fan art piece for him, and this is exactly what the post is right here. This was from February, yeah, February 26th of last year. And this is a constant reminder, and he did actually like and comment on it, which was super cool. And no, this is not a fake post. This is legitimately real. I get a lot of people saying that it's fake, but it is for real. You can see right there. That is from his official fan page. And to be honest, I don't know who printed this out and sent it to me, but, you know, it's a constant reminder to me. See, while you guys are out there, you know, earning, you know, like gold, silver, play buttons, or, you know, you guys are earning Grammys, I'm earning stuff like this, and this to me is worth way more than any Grammy nominee, than anything in the world. This right here is a testament to my hard work. And it reminds me every day of what I strive for. Like, it's a constant reminder for me. Hold on, guys. I'll be right back. Sorry, they got to sign that sign birthday card for somebody real quick, but uh, I'm back. Let's through here. But, you know, like I said, while you others out there that are, you know, earning Grammys and, you know, this and that, I'm only here earning the respect of major, major people. Right, and I know I speak about them a lot, but it's because it's a testament to what I do. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, my older brother, yes, he was gay. Um, even though he's passed away now for a couple years now. But when he was alive, he actually had this best friend named Kevin, who is actually the cousin of actors Bo and Jeff Bridges. 
And I grew up with Bo and Jeff Bridges not knowing they were actors, like, as kids. Like, I met Bo and Jeff, you know, when I was around, like, 10 years old. They came over. They, they were just friends of the family. Not knowing that they were actually famous. Like, I had no idea, because they acted in everything. Like, they acted just like your normal, average person. They didn't act like major actors at all. Like, they were really cool, really laid back. And I'm still very good friends with the, both of them to this day. And they both see my stuff, and they're like, you're really good. And a lot of people, and this is something that does annoy me, is people that are that I talk to are like, dude, like you need to use them to get to where you want to be. Like that's a major deal for you. But me, I don't believe in using people. I don't believe in even if they're famous, you don't ever use someone to get to where you want to be. Okay, just because I know major actors and major artists. That doesn't mean I'm going to use them to get to where I want to be. I mean, yeah, I'll collaborate with them on stuff. You know, or like I'll show them ideas that I might have. But I'm not going to sit there and use them to get to where I want to be. I believe in doing it the hard, long way. And a lot of people hate me for that. But you know what? I enjoy the hard work. I enjoy the struggle. Because as I'm doing it, I'm proving a lot of people wrong. Because me, I started my music career and have been doing my music career off of legitimately no money whatsoever. I have not spent one single dime on anything that I use. And a lot of people tell me, oh, in order to get somewhere, you know, you have to spend money. No, you don't. That saying about you have to spend money to make money nowadays, dude, that's gone out the window. That's been done for years now. I mean, in some cases, it's still there for certain careers. But when it comes to music, you don't need money at all. You really don't. I mean, yeah, it helps. But you don't need the money to make it. If you guys want to know how, I'll show you just a little bit. Peace.